top of the morning to you brothers and sisters of the hook once again to my surprise I will be going out solo today get some of the dirt off my shoes before I get in the boat because Big John says he is gonna wait to go out deep I guess he's spoiled when he saw all those vermilion that I caught the other day out deep so anyway, he said he's going to wait to go out deep. That might be on Brother Gary's boat. Because I think Brother Gary's going to want to go out pretty soon, too. Anyway, that's where we are. I'm solo again today. I might be taking out Cousin Kyle shortly. Because he's been wanting to go. And by golly, he's family. That's why I call him Cousin. So we'll be taking him out shortly, in a little bit. We've had lots of storms every afternoon. That's why I'm going to kind of hang close today. So I can beat it in if we get storms that I can determine coming my way. Okay, so let's get out so we can do something. I'm out here. I made a change of plans. You see how the waves are coming from the south? Well, I was able to ride the, the troughs of these waves. They're about one and a half to two feet. I was able to ride the troughs all the way out, so I decided to come out to my little special spot where the last time I saw those mangrove snapper. And even though I don't have, I've only got three live finger mullets that I was able to cast them, two, two finger mullets and one other little fish. I'm going to come out here and see if I can figure out how to get some of these mangroves to come up a little higher in the column so I can catch them. But I'm out here, a little bit of white caps, a little bit of wind, not too bad. Looks like it's going to be a white cap fishing summer. But I'm out here. They turn the beach right over there. Hawks in there. Let me get set up here and figure out where I am. Let me anchor up. I know it's going to be too uh, windy and too wavy. Control motor. I'll get back to you when oh, something starts. Before I forget, which is not unusual for me, happy birthday to Peter Rochetta. I hope I've said your name properly. Peter. Happy birthday. Mike Bird. Rene Lombardo, and of course, Big John. Happy birthday, Big John. Wish you were out here. A little bit rocky. And of course, my son, Stuart, had a birthday, 42 years old. Man, oh man, how can that be? I'm only 42, I think. No, maybe I'm not. All right, all right, let me, Throw the anchor out and see what's going on. Well, while I am here catching some bait, some grunts for bait, just missed whatever that was. That was something nice on here on my sabiki. I want to thank Michigan Steve for sending me that nice igloo cooler and a couple of these freezy packs in there. They're in there. A weight scale. Man, oh man, I've got a weight scale for a change. And I'm going to try to keep the salt water off of it. That's what's killed my last four or five. Well, I've got a weight scale now. And I gave a couple of those ice packs to Big John. They're going to help keep my... Uh... Oh, and he sent me a um... catch cooler. I can put some, me or Big John can put some bigger fish in the catch cooler. Thank you, Michigan Steve. Good to have brothers of the hook, believers like you. Really appreciate it. All right, let's see what this is. <clears throat> this was a, uh, nothing now. <clears throat> I had a, a hunk of grunt, more or less floating out there. See, whoa. There's something here now. This is also on a hunk of grunt. 
Could be nothing but red snappers coming up, and I'm trying to attract some blasted mangroves. Ugh. I want some mangroves. I buried the hook. Well, couldn't see it. This does not feel like a mangrove. It feels like a red. Well, let's see what we got here. Sorry for the wind noise. That might be happening all year this year. That's what it seems like. Come about noon, I'm going to have to start thinking about going back. <clears throat> because they're calling for 2 o'clock thunderstorms again. I see light color. And not brown, but red. Not brown, but red. Whoa. Well, something hit the back line just now. Hit it again. Got a sardine on there. All right, something's got him. Let me get this red guy off. Let's see what I can do about this guy. Okay. And we'll see what this guy is. The way he's going, like down. Oh, and he just turned loose. Just got loose. Can't say what it was, don't know. Got a wire on this line though. Okay. We'll try again. Well, I had a uh, hunk of grunt, buried the hook. Uh, I hope it's not a little red snapper. I hope it's a big mangrove. He ate it. Oh! Uh, 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 just got off. Uh. Oh, darn it! <laughs> I'll get one of these guys yet. Yeah, once again, we got something that doesn't feel exactly like a red snapper. <clears throat> got him off the bottom. A hunk of grunt. Not fighting quite as hard as a red snapper, but looking awful. Red snappers, oh, maybe triggerish even. Oh, look a little bit triggerish to me. Well, you know what? If I can get him in the boat, that's a keeper trigger right there. That's a keeper trigger. I'll take that any day. Oh, man. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. I'll measure him up. And I'm pretty sure he's going to go in. My brother. Steve from Michigan, Michigan Steve's cooler that he sent me. 16 and a quarter. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's put him under ice right chia. Right chia. That was on a hunk of grunt. Yeah. Oh, there's a. Uh, Got Pastime Princess uh, Critter Fleet over there, reef number 11. Yeah, I see Well, him. I was running low on grunts, so I dropped the old sabiki down again. And I got a grunt. And I got this. Feel almost like a trigger. If it is, he might be borderline. It's hard to tell. Yeah, and that's a trigger. He looks a little small from here. He looks a little small, but I'll put the measuring stick on him. Yes, uh, oh, he looks a little bigger. Uh, we'll say 13. Bingo, right on, 13. <laughs> Let me go down to get your pappy. All right, kiddos, this is on a whole grunt. I can already see him, too. If I didn't know better, I'd say I could see other things around him. It's just a big red snapper. Mmm, big one. On a whole grunt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of get, you want to catch when the uh, season gets here. I know where to come. 
I wish I could avoid them right about now. Yeah, I hear you. All right, get gone. There he goes. Woo! Whole grunt. I'm looking for a big anything else. Right, this was my back line. And it's nothing but a great big red snapper. Come up off the bottom. About to pull me in the water. Come on. You got a whole grunt on that line. Trying for anything else. Now I don't want a shark, of course. Man, this is a big boy. Ooh. Ooh. He got me in a st structure. How about that? I'll be darn. There we go. Got him out. Come on. Come on up here. Yeah, he took me down in part of that shelf down there or something. Hmm. You know, maybe this is not a red snapper. Wouldn't that be nice? I like to put one grouper in the cooler. I don't think groupers come up off the bottom to get a back line. I don't see him yet. He's looking awful light. And big. Just a great big red snapper. Look at that. Hola, guacamole. And he took me down in some structure down there. Golly, look at the size of that hog. There she goes. She's free. Let me throw another sardine out the back. Never know. Let me tell you, folks. That's how big these red snapper are. Look at that hook. Lucky to get that one up. I didn't show all of them because there's just I can't get away from them. They're just everywhere out here. Well, we got four trigger fish. Only one was legal size. Got a whole bunch of red snapper, all of them huge, pretty much. There's a couple small ones. So I see clouds forming up there in the uh, distance by shore, so I'm going to start heading in now. About 1130. I'm going to try to stop at reef number 14, just to see if there's anything there. It's a new reef. It's outside of Ponce Inlet. It's got a little bit choppier. So I'll work my way back in. I'll get back in a bit. Since this is probably going to be a little bit of a short video, since I decided not to stop at reef number 14 to see if I can catch some flounder, because my motor kind of sputtered once or twice, and I just don't want to rely on it out in the ocean when it's not acting perfect. Now that's called wisdom. If I can get back inside, I'm going to get back inside the inlet. That's where I am right now. Anyway, I'm headed back for the ramp. You can see these rain clouds are starting to develop, so it's all in God's hands. Some of you were asking how I had my underwater cam set up. So this is a good opportunity to show you. See that? This here, I have a, a lead weight, only comes to about here. 
It's about oh, five, six pounds at least. Both. These are stainless steel. And these are fiberglass, I believe. Some sort of fiberglass. And my cams are all pointed in a little bit different direction so I can get you know as much coverage as I possibly could. I did have one on this side uh, a couple years ago, but you know, water intrusion, I just had to throw it away. But to be able to keep the balance, I had to put some lead weights on here so that it's balanced as it's going down. And up on top here, I have a clip, a clip around, and I let it down with my uh, that fishing pole you saw. And it goes down pretty quick. Anyway, that's my cam setup. That's about the third iteration. Done, done in a whole bunch of different ways, and this is the best way that I've found for me. Alrighty, head for the ramp. <laughs>